Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Adventures and today we're going to be taking a look at the this month's devlog for Prehistoric Kingdom. This will be devlog 37 for March 2021. So let's get into it. So welcome to March's development update. This month, this month's devlog will be taking a look at what we've been working on, what the community's been up to and the response to our latest release. And we can see here, now that's wonderful. Rudy is obviously very famous for being the camel guy that does lots of Planet Zoo videos. And I think he's really just transitioned well to play, uh, Prehistoric Kingdom. And doesn't that look wonderful? He's clearly able to make some wonderful things. So yeah, now let's have a look at the state of development. So... To start, we want to thank everyone who participated in the alpha, roughly 1,300 people. So that's a lot of people. Imagine putting them all in a room together, that'd be a bit difficult. They want to say thank you. You all building some amazing stuff and the team is extremely happy to hear the excitement of the community. And so am I. I really love seeing this game getting support. Detailed in our last live stream, there's a number of additions and improvements we're working on for the alpha. Since then, the teams decided to reschedule the addition of the viewing platform and building state icons for beta so that we can probably introduce their mechanics at a more appropriate time. So that's not going to be coming in the alpha, unfortunately, but that's fine. It's not going to be coming to eventually. It's just coming in the beta. Overall, we're expecting support for alpha to come to an end in early April, though this may be extended if major issues arrive. So expect... Uh, early April to be the kind of the last bits of support. So yeah, we can see the alpha roadmap, some little things we got going here. We can see the improved, I wonder how big is this, 150, okay. We can see the changes we're coming, the animals will get new behaviors and animations, so they'll be just eating and drinking along with better pathfinding. On the outside, you'll get new modular stairs, so that'd be pretty cool. And, okay, and mix, uh, miscellaneous uh, art adjustments, so kind of just, Little tweaks here and there. Same with the uh, audio. There's will be some tweaks on the audio and general just bug fixes and stability. So other than these things, you'd probably expect it to be pretty much the same. On a more musical note, pun intended, our composer and sound designer Byron begun writing and planning on the new soundtrack earlier this March. That's cool. This time around, we're aiming to create a very dynamic score, one that's adaptive and built around a layered music system. We've learned a lot about modern, modern audio implementation over the last year, and we really wanted to do the potential of this game's music justice. Now that's awesome. If you've been hearing the music already, it's just really wants to get you pumped and the energy you just want to build, and it's like magical. It's really awesome. Though a lot of our the original melodies and motifs will carry on in some form or another, we hope you look forward to hearing some fresh works in the upcoming beta, so that'll be fun. So, Byron, you're doing a good job. So here's a development report. We can see pathfinding is happening. Landscaping, save it for later. We must go faster, so all that. You can read through that. Now, development highlights. Guests, modular pathfinding. As you may have already seen in alpha footage, our visitors are fully able to navigate in, on, and around modular structures. This is a real game changer, and it means that guests do not solely rely on past paths to get around your park. That really is, because you can make modular things, you can look, this guy made a um, Leaf Productions, he's actually a pretty good modder as well, uh, for Planet Zoo. He uh, made a raw bridge out of modular pieces that the guests can use, and isn't that awesome? It's very awesome. So naturally, this also allows to build custom bridges without the need for elevated paths. If there's a navigable area, navigatable area between the guests and the destination, they use it. So we can see here that looks wonderful. And as I know what, this functionality extends to the guest pathfinding in general, allowing them to walk on building foundations as if paths were underneath them. So looks perfect. You don't need to worry all the time about paths. That'll be awesome. Pathfinding is something that will be continually tweaked over time, and we already have a bunch of ideas on how to improve it. It's got huge potential, and we can't wait to make it the best we can. Agreed, I think it's got a lot of potential. And now we'll move on to UI, improvements and changes. So let's see if we can clip that. Okay, we can. Thanks to our 
Thanks to great feedback from our lovely alpha players who started working on some tweaks and updates for our user interface. Please note that these changes will not be available until the beta. So we can see this is some new changes here. I really like how this looks better. We can see that in the middle uh, slots there. I think that looks a lot better. So yeah, we'll talk about it. For the nursery, we noted that some players are struggling to find the animal creation box. With these adjustments, we hope to make the area more digestible <laughs> in the main workshop, as the main workshop, but workspace. Some more miscellaneous enhancements were made too, tweaks like centralizing the animal's name and variance, various balances to the overall piece. So it looks really, really good. It just looks a little bit tidier. I think that was great having that here. And the centralize. Yeah, I think that works much better. When it comes to construction, however, there are a few things that we needed to communicate better. When am I editing a group? A new screen border, group header, and dedicated exit button will appear when the player enters a group. A subtle audio cue will also play. What are the keybinds? On-screen keybinds will be bigger and more specific to what the user is actually doing, eliminating excess visual noise, and hopefully inspiring new players to give it them a glance. If you master, though, these floating, floating keybinds can be turned off at the options menu. So clearly works out well and I'm really liking how this has come along. For the toolbox in general would be splitting up into two components, splitting it into two components for centralized access, settings and customization. What appears in the respective window will be contents context sensitive depending on what's currently ready for placement and what's selected in the world. So if we have a look here, see these these look much better. I like these more bold uh, uh, keybinds exit group so that's clearly a lot more obvious i think that helps a lot we can see these things happening oh oh i think that works a lot better and ui concept art modular toolbox keybinds and group editing overlay so we can see that looks looks fine looks great incredible even and then here we have the modular toolbox Wall material, concrete, modern style. I think that works really well. Looks a lot better. Looks a lot better. Okay. This change will give players the ability to select multiple items in a group and change the textures of walls, roof, and rocks at the same time. Currently, that isn't allowed with the current UI. So, if you select something that's in a group that has both rocks, uh, roofs, and walls, you just change it on the fly. And that, I think, re really helps with just the accessibility of the game. Because if you just play the alpha now and then compare it to Planet Zoo, it's almost like a breeze to make a great enclosure, and it's really, really awesome. So, yeah. Remember, though, this is context-sensitive. So if a roof piece is selected, only the roof material panel will appear for customization. What does or doesn't show is entirely based on what you're doing. So if you only select a wall, that's all you're going to get. If you're selecting a wall and a roof, you're going to get a wall and a roof. If you're selecting a rock and a wall, you're getting a rock and a wall. So if you guys are like, oh, there's no roof, it's just because you haven't selected a roof. And now we've got building state icons. So this is cool. To help with general usability, building state icons will be added during the beta to better display what's needed for the player at a moment's notice. They remain a consistent size on screen, but scale down over distance. We should, we should note that these are reserved for things that require your attention or that are time sensitive. We don't want to overwhelm the player with non-critical information. Passive things like incubation times are in a friendly bubble and bad things are in a green, red, black hexagons. So you can see here, this is the uh, nursery, animal nursery is going, okay, we've got some animals to get along. And look at all this. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That means we've got some power problems and some people problems. No piling. None of that. No, no, none of that. So we've got the animal showcase. So it's big, it's bold, ad hoc. Meet our redesigned Lambiosaurus, a surprise change that wasn't properly unveiled until Alpha launch. This animal has quickly become a favorite amongst Alpha players with its unique call and vibrant skin variation. So I really like this guy, Lambiosaurus. I feel like it's one of the most overrated, underrated dinosaurs. 
which is a weird thing to say, but it's still a wonderful animal, especially the skins that they gave it in game and the changes that have been added. It really does look wonderful. And then we can see, apart from a from a bunch of lovely new designs, we take the number of key features like the facial anatomy and of course the new giant tail. So we can see the anatomy has been changed quite a bit and we can see this big fat tail, which is courtesy of Great Paul. So if you guys don't know who Great Paul is, well he's not a he, it's a species, it's a, uh, well genus actually, that's sometimes lumped into Lambiosaurus, that is uh, Magnapolia, which was discovered in California in northwest Mexico and is a pretty big boy and has very charismatic for that big tail i wouldn't pull it up here but you can if you look up magnapolia it has a very very big tail that really added to the design of this which fits well it's considered a lampisaurus species sometimes sometimes it's lumped into that but also it's just the extension of soft tissue really so it's kind of just taking the soft tissue and made it fit more like kind of the big paw style of that really really rounded tail which i think really fits in well because most lambiosaurus reconstructions give it quite a, a thin tail but this one's kind of really extended it out it's to a realistic extent but i think it looks great and yes so we got the news roundup in case you haven't seen any gameplay from the alpha there have been loads of fantastic content creators covering it in extreme detail including me if you want to check out the uh, <laughs> if you want to check out the videos of me playing the alpha along with the showcases and everything i'm going to be doing more of those especially after the southeast asia packs kind of gone out so we're going to be playing a lot more of that so we can see some wonderful people that have been making it we got the lady designer who's a very very great uh designer that's a lady and she does planet zoo mostly and she's doing a bit of prehistoric kingdom and seems to be really enjoying it we've got caesar creates this one looks really well this guy doesn't have too many subs but we should give him some support i think that's awesome and that looks great from just the thumbnail alone and we have rudy back again with the raptor house and i think that looks awesome and now we have the beta and early access roadmap so looking at the roadmap looking at the release roadmap this is the game this is where the game is headed in 2021 it's very important to note that these are estimated dates and we're taking community feedback into account during both alpha and beta we want to release a stable product for early access and we will take our time take the time necessary to do so if it assures a more premium experience so that's always good i'd rather wait a little bit more for something better so these are subjects to change, of course, so don't be like, oh, it's not out at this time. Ugh. So often these would be flexible, and if any changes will happen, they will let us know through the devlogs or just announcements, so I wouldn't worry too much. Our next milestone, the beta, will be introducing a bunch of improvements, new features, and animals on top of the six available animals in the alpha. This is very exciting for us, as with any major release, our project feels more and more like a game. And I definitely agree with that. Some mechanics that were closed, closely tied to staff, e.g. animal food production, also be pushed back as an update post EA launch to help ease the development schedule. As always, we're always providing, we'll be providing insight into what's changing, and what's been added in future devlogs. So they'll always keep us posted through the devlogs and they'll keep us posted through their many different social medias. So I wouldn't worry too much. You gotta stay in the loop, and we can see. Let's we have any. This is the run to the uh, alpha that we got. So this is just what we got now. We can see the beta expected Q2 of 2021. We got welfare and improved animal behaviors, uh, excavations, and with some progression and enhanced visitors. A more refined with we to here. A more refined experience building on top of what we learned at the alpha introduces more management systems and completes those currently available. And then we can see that the early access, you've got Nigel Marvin, the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend. You've got additional animals and items and progression with the research. So more feature rich uh, iteration of Prehistoric Kingdom ever. So this is going to be pretty big, the most features. Post launch content and updates will continue to improve the experience. So this will be out in early access. Once we get to early access, it'll be full release. And then there'll be post uh, DLC if the game's successful enough to really just ha what happens so there's 
So it's kind of just everything going from there. Too hard to think about stuff like that, but we're going to get early access Q3 2021, hopefully. Might be some changes, as with game development, stuff always changes, so I wouldn't worry. So let's have a look at the community spotlight. Now this reminds me of Prehistoric Park, I love it. We can see, if you guys remember when he brings Nigel, Nigel brings animals into the present, gives them these little things here, and that looks wonderful. Who made these? This done by Kazmasaur Luke, he done a good job. I really like this. I really like just people are so creative, and we can do it with dinosaurs, the dinosaurs. We can make wonderful enclosure. enclosures. Jurassic, is this Jurassic Riley? Oh, I like this one. We can see there's the three Nasutoceratops in here. This looks really nice. I like the uh, uh, dip in there with the muddy water. I think that looks wonderful. I like that one a lot. There's really some wonderful ones, especially with the rocks in the back. I think that looks cool. I know I'm usually like, I don't want to use rocks too much, but I feel like you can use rocks sparingly and they look great. And then we have by the beach dog. This is like some sort of, uh, and we can't click it sadly. But this is like a really cool dome. I can imagine this works well with Microraptors. You can see some over there. You maybe put some other animals in here. I think that looks great. We can see this cool one. I really like this dome. I can't believe someone actually made a proper dome. I think that looks really, really cool. You see Microraptor. You can see the people walk around in the dome and you can see the Microraptors hanging out in there. Really cool. And by Zekin and Nicholas Lyon Ryder. Killy has the circle of life going with the T-Rex hanging out there. Pretty well timed, I will say so myself. And then we have of many voices with this cute drawing showing all the animals. Like that Nosutoceratops, he's a chubby boy. I likey, I likey, likey, lovey. So yeah, thank you for reading March's devlog. Alpha's been brilliant so far and the team is hard at working. Uh, on some new hotfixes and patches that'll be out very soon. Once again, thank you so much for all our supporters. Whether you've been with us for years or just days, we're happy you're here and we need this. This game deserves that support. So until next time, BK team. So yeah, nice little devlog, a cool update to see what's been happening. I really like some of the new things that have been developed. And I'm excited to see what's been happening in the next month. So yeah, I think this would be a good place to end the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys liked and subscribe. Always remember to click that little bell icon to make sure you get notified when you're uploading anything. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe and bye-bye.